Hello guys and welcome to Program Artist. In this episode I will talk about error handling, more specifically how to report and how to handle errors. You may ask yourself, why is he talking about error handling? Well, because error handling is something we all do. Error handling is a big part of our code base and we need to think about it also as code and to handle it well. Moreover, it has more significant meaning when searching for bugs and seeing the status of our entire system. If you don't pay attention on how you work with errors, it may become a mess and it will be hard to understand where they are occurred and what's the reason for it. So when talking about reporting errors, there are basically two ways of how people do it. One of them is reporting an error code uh, returning it and the other one is exceptions. So let's look at both ways of doing the same thing. So we have an and error code, some error will be on one of them, this and the function and fail with error code, which will return error code. Okay. So this function fails returning some error, we also have a function to fail with session. Okay, so what we'll do is throw in error and some error. Okay. So these are the basic two ways of returning or you can call it reporting an error. Let's just look at a code of how we can handle the errors which are reported in, uh, in these functions. I'll assume uh, I call two times for the, each of the functions. And let's see the handling for functions. So handle an error code. Let's look at the error one, should be with error code. And I'll check if error one is an error code something. And I will or check if I have some error, I will handle it. And continue and run. Otherwise I'll continue to with error code. And if error to exist, I will also handle error and run. Or I'll have to run. Let's do the Okay, so this is how the code with errors works. Now let's look at the handle sessions. How the function looks. I'll write fail with session, fail with session, I'll call twice, fetch an error, and handle error. Okay, so what can we see immediately is that the exceptions, the handling part of exceptions, is much shorter than the error code handling function. Moreover, uh, with the exceptions, we have a single point where we handle the errors, uh, where in error codes we have two places which we uh, handle the error and most probably the handling error part will be mostly the same and it will be either code duplication or calling to some function, uh, but it easily can become uh, different because someone can change here something and forget to change something here and it also breaks the the flow of the logic because we need to see the logic as here and remove and don't think about the error handling part when we look at the good path but the error handling code uh, breaks that uh, sequence where in exception uh, where we're working with exceptions we can see all the logic in one single place and all the error handling in another place Another bad thing that can happen here is if we want to uh, propagate the error, like we don't want to handle it, uh, all we have to do in exceptions is just remove the try catch, okay? And the error will propagate by itself. We don't have to write any code for it and it will work. But when we're working with error codes, we always have to do something like this. Return error one, okay? so. If we want to propagate the error to the function that called to us when we got an error, we always have to return error codes, but when we are working with exceptions, uh, we don't have to do it. Another difference, which is a huge difference with the both approaches, is knowing where the error originated from. So when we have the error codes handling system, we, we can do something like this console log and I don't know the error was inside fail with blah blah okay so within this place all we can know is that the error happens somewhere within this function but we don't have any more information at this point but when we look at the exceptions what we can see is if the error is actually an error because in the JavaScript we can throw even a string or an object uh, or a number 
but if it is an error, we can have a stack trace of the error, meaning all the information of all the method calls and the hierarchy within which they were called. So we have all the information we need to see where the error is originated from. And another key feature of exceptions is using, let's delete it, using the finally clause to do some finalizing logic, some finalizing logic. For instance, we can open a connection to database and we don't, don't care if we had some kind of an error uh, to, I don't know, to delete some uh, row within a uh, database or we succeeded. Uh, at the end, we always want to close the connection. We can have the same logic here, but it will be much harder to do especially when the error handling code is split now so now we need to uh, remember to do it in both places so we can extract it to a method and pass the parameter of the connection but it is more complicated than uh, doing it with the exceptions so from what we've seen so far I can argue that handling errors with error codes is way worse than, ha than handling errors with exceptions. So when you have a choice, please, please, please choose throwing errors and handling errors with try catch uh, on the error code handling system. It has much more benefits and it is way better. You can do a lot of more good stuff with it and it is less confusing and just do it, okay? Trust me on this. But the story doesn't end here. Uh, we have a lot of languages that use exceptions, and one of them is Java. And in Java, uh, you need to specify when a function throws an exception. And you can do something like, uh, well, it won't compile here, I'll have an error, but you can have something like this throws, uh, I don't know, IO exception, and uh, I don't know, uh, connection, exception okay and when you have something like this uh, you may think that it is better to specify all the proper exceptions that this function uh, is throwing let's just move it here that it will be more uh, logical but actually it's the opposite way around if you have this kind of uh, method declaration, this means that the handle error codes will probably always also have the same thing if it doesn't handle, I'm sorry, not this one, this handle exceptions, if it doesn't catch any errors, it will have to declare the same throws. What's the problem with it? The problem is when you add some another exception, uh, I don't know, new error exception, okay, when you do it, now all the methods, including the handle exception method, have to declare uh, the new exception that you are throwing. But what's the problem with it? Like you can think, I added a new exception and no one else knew that I added it. I can have a bug. But the issue is what I'm trying to say is usually when you're handling errors, usually in most cases you don't care what's there. You usually catch the global error, the exception, and you usually just log it, propagate it out, like throwing a new exception and wrapping it around, or just uh, doing nothing, or closing some connection, or uh, I don't know, notifying the user that some kind of error happened. And usually you don't really care what kind of error happened. In these cases, it is just wasting your time by adding all the thrown exceptions and propagating them, the declaration of them. Uh, to other methods. So in when you do something like this, if you have to do it, okay, please try to do something like this. Just declare the most low exception that you can, uh, meaning that the calling function, okay, the function that calls the handle exceptions, that calls fail with exception, needs to handle the most common case. This means when you add a new exception, uh, you won't need to change any declaration of any function, okay? And only if you add some kind of specific throwing exception, 
Okay, like uh, you can throw here a connection to database exception and you want to handle it uh, somewhere up the stream of the handling error exceptions, then you can add a specific catch for that specific exception uh, without the need to propagate the declaration of all of the methods. So although Java uh, intended well to specify explicitly what errors are thrown from the method, uh, usually it doesn't work, work so well. Uh, it has actually broken a principle of open close principle in the clean code. You should read about it. Uh, but basically it means if you change some uh, inner part of your code, the other code should not change because of it. And why it breaks it? It breaks it because if you add a new exception here, all of the other code that handles the exceptions outside has to change the declarations of the methods, even without the logic of the code, it needs to be changed. So let me just delete this, so it will not throw any errors. So we have established that we are using exceptions to throw the errors that we're having. So let's look on how we report those errors. So here, let's look at the fail with exception method. Let's just close this and this. Here I'm throwing uh, just some kind of error uh, and it doesn't very tell us a lot. So usually what you want to do is throw some kind of uh, error that says something meaningful like uh, the user does not have permissions, permissions to delete the item. But moreover if you're having like user ID, okay, which is a string, uh, you want to specify the user which threw the, uh, this error. So I'll, add, I'll just add it here. User ID. Okay, so here I'm throwing some kind of specific error message which can be useful when, uh, when we're getting this error somewhere. We can see what user fail to delete the item. And let's just put some user ID here. Moreover, when we are catching the error here, okay, we can add more information if we want, but if we don't want to add some information, you should re-throw the error, okay? Throw it. Or don't catch it at all. But only... Okay, sorry. But if you have some uh, new information to add, and only if it is new, uh, please wrap it with another error and propagate the new error with the thrown error within it. So what you want to do is you want to error, which sends error, okay, and it has a structure, message, string, and inner error, and it also a message, and the inner is a public, and what you want to do is kind of stack the inner message, which is inner stack, which is this inner stack. Okay, so we have both this error console, or some other post-stack, both stack, both errors. So what you do here is create some kind of complex error with some kind of message and with an exception uh, from user. Okay, and you add right here uh, fail deleting the comments. Okay, and I will add the comment here that you just uh, write down this. Okay, so assume we have some kind of a comment ID URL. Let's just fix it here here. And comment ID is something that we receive. Okay, so I'm adding new information. Okay, because in this context, the let's assume that the function only had the user ID. It didn't know it work. It was working on comments. So all it can it could add us is that the user could, does not have any permissions. In this uh, in this place, I know that I'm trying to delete a comment, so I'm caching the previous error the, that the user doesn't have permissions, and I'm uh, adding the information that the user failed to, to delete the comment with the comment ID. Okay, and you can create a more explicit. Uh, exception, delete comments, error, which sends complex error, okay, and you can do something like this, comments ID, string, and if you do inner error, and call super with a fail deleting comment with a comment ID, comment ID, okay, and the inner, and the inner error, okay, so now I change this exception, just do this type error, okay, and now I still have the same information because the, because the delete comment error, comment, uh, the delete comment error has the information that the user does not have permissions because it has it in the inner exception and uh, it has the information about the comment ID that uh, the user failed to delete inside the public property uh, comment ID 
Why am I writing comment? Okay, inside the commentator. Also here. Wow. Okay, commented. Okay, so now we're propagating new information that we didn't have before inside the inner exception outside. And one more thing that I want to tell you is if you're thinking about catching an error, logging something and withdrawing the error, please think, think twice because probably when you withdraw this error, someone will catch the same error log something and probably will withdraw the error and the disk way goes around and around and what you will see inside the log you will see the same error reported in the log for like three four or five times and it is just cluttering the log you'll see a huge chunk of errors which mean exactly the same and it, and it is actually annoying and uh, you you will lose the sight of actually what's happening and you can miss some logs, some important logs. So my tip to you is when you're thinking about logging the error that happened, please uh, take an account if you can add some really important information to the log, like some inner property or variable that the catching function from outside wouldn't have. You've watched an episode about error handling. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more programming tips videos by clicking over here, or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more coding related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on ProgramRs!